what's up guys it's amy so it's college application season and even though we're already pretty deep into it i thought it'd be helpful to go through what kinds of things are important to show in your caltech application so you guys are putting together all the required information like essays stats and stuff but those are the what what you have on there but there are particular things that the pieces all have to show and even if you aren't applying yet i'd say this video is still helpful and even more so because the earlier you know what you want on the application the earlier in the beginning of high school you can decide what extracurriculars and what classes to take as well as how to prepare yourself overall i already made a how i got into caltech video this video shows the what and not necessarily the how or like why it's important. The Caltech admissions rate is usually six to seven percent so very low and to get into that small group that's accepted there are particular things to look for and target. So by being aware of these you can have a more expert eye when you're looking at your own application. So some background on Caltech even though it's really difficult to get into Caltech and almost even more difficult to get out of it alive it was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Um, granted I've only lived 22 years but that's saying a lot because it was also one of the hardest if not the hardest experiences and that's because Caltech's such a unique school with its house system like Hogwarts and it's less than a thousand undergrad population many people don't know that they think oh it's like Cal State people call it the MIT of the West so that's why they think there's a higher number of students as far as student to faculty ratio is three to one and that's another unique aspect and just shows how great the opportunities are whether you want to work in a lab and just have more contact so before I jump into the four things make sure to like and subscribe and oh one more thing the quote for today is aim for the moon if you miss you hit a star uh, ignoring the fact that this is completely scientifically unreasonable the point is that but even though Caltech is really hard and a big goal per se, you'll still gain a lot from just striving to meet this high goal. Because by aiming for these high stats and doing these other things that just make you have greater human capital overall, you're setting yourself up for greater success in the other colleges you apply to. Okay, and now without further ado, let's go! Okay, the first thing that admissions looks for is academic preparedness. This is basically a threshold or like minimum baseline of what you need to meet to even be considered for admission. Prep Scholar goes as far as to call them Caltech stats requirements and rates them all as extremely competitive. So for the class of 2024, the mid 50% scores of accepted applicants range between a 1510 and 1570 for the SAT and then on the ACT a composite score for the same range 35 to a 36 and also 96% of accepted students were in the top one tenth of their classes. These stats are really important to consider and it's not to say that you absolutely cannot make it if you are not within at least this middle range but it's just much more difficult because even though admissions takes a holistic view, you're gonna already have a ding or like minus points, however you wanna look at it, on your application if you're not meeting this minimum standard that other applicants are meeting. And for the SAT, like my score was 1520, ACT I got a 35. So it's kind of like on the low range of the middle. And so then in that case, like I met it, but I will also have to compete with those who had the 75 percentile score like a 36 and 1570 and I make up for that with my classes and the academic rigor in that way and GPA. Along with that is the grades aspect. Basically this is another threshold you need to meet because admissions knows that Caltech academics are so hard so in those high school classes whatever they may be you should be showing that you can excel in them and even though people say like grades and these standardized tests are kind of an unfair way to measure intelligence per se. Think of them as the only gauge that they really have quantitatively. And so having a good score also shows that effort and your actual interest into getting to such a high caliber school. That's the same across all the IVs and IV plus like MIT and Stanford. For grades, you want to aim for straight A's at 4.0 unweighted and then weight it as high as you can possibly get it. And I actually made a video on how to maximize your GPA using some easy tricks. Show your academic preparedness and readiness to take on the 
very tough academics at Caltech through taking the most challenging courses offered by a school. Along with that academic ability is outstanding academic drive. So not only are you checking off boxes and getting those stats, those numbers, but you also have to show commitment to learning more. Caltech's coursework is extremely difficult. You can see that in my vlogs that literally everyone struggles. At least I know, maybe they're like geniuses who, actually they're definitely geniuses who don't struggle as much, but basically Caltech is on the whole difficult for everyone. So their admissions process is kind of trying to differentiate between those who they think can handle this. That's not to say that if you don't have the very tough courses or maybe your school doesn't offer them, that you absolutely won't be considered, but you show in other ways how you have the academic drive. This is because it takes more than ability to get through Caltech. Everyone at Caltech is smart, but everyone also struggles. It's more about the grit to get through those very late nights and those very few hours of sleep. Again, as you can see through my vlogs. <laughs> I worked for 15 hours straight and I didn't even finish half of it. They want to see reflected in your coursework and other academic areas that you're driven and you have an excellent foundation in math and science. That's a given, but you'd also be surprised that Caltech really values someone who's well-rounded. And that's seen because there's actually a really big humanities requirement at Caltech. You have to take one humanities class every term. And that was surprising to me because a lot of my friends at like Car School of Mines or MIT, for example, they don't have a humanities requirement. In fact, to apply to Caltech in their application requirements, you must have taken the most advanced and rigorous English coursework offered by your school and at least one course in US history or government. You want to be challenging yourself as much as possible early on in high school and have that reflected in your classes in the form of AP or IB classes and college math if you are able to do that. That's a big plus, so I took like a college math course through online at my like local university. That again shows commitment because even though I maxed out of all levels already offered by my school, I didn't think- Okay, I already made it to the top level offer that shows that I'm already trying my best. No, you still look for more opportunities because math and science and exploration of being a scientist and that intellectual capacity and curiosity that Caltech wants to see doesn't stop with what's given to you. You look for those opportunities yourself and especially if you're trying to push for those advanced classes that might not be offered at your school, then that shows your leadership and true desire and passion to challenge yourself intellectually. Sorry if that was a little circular, but I hope you get what I mean. And keep in mind though that no credit is offered for these advanced classes like these AP, IB, college math. Caltech does not take any of those into consideration for skipping classes. Caltech just starts at a higher level, so you need those in order to excel in Caltech courses. And because it is Caltech, you can decide which part of that name you like the most, but you need a passion for math and science. And so a strong background in this is very important and that's also why I say that it's really valuable. You get an advantage for seeing this video or understanding these things early since in middle school you can start on math counts which is a math competition. I only did it like the last half of eighth grade but it shows that even once I got into it that it's never really too late if you're truly passionate about it and you put in the time and effort. And it shouldn't be that difficult to put in the time and effort if you're truly interested in math and science. You want to look for those science and math competitions and not only participate, but show results. That indicates commitment and also, again, your ability to excel in these really difficult math and science classes. What's cool about these like math and science competitions, I did math competitions personally, is that they require you to understand the math and problem solve and open up your analytical thinking, which is what Caltech's looking for and how you do well in the classes because it's not just a clear cut formula that you follow each time or rote memorization. In fact, all of Caltech's tests, except for like organic chemistry and some others, they're open book, open everything sometimes. And so that just shows that like it takes a problem solving skill 
with the tools you already have in your toolbox, not just acquiring the tools themselves. I did math competitions like the AMC 10 and 12. Another way to show your passion is through summer programs. You think that summer vacation is a time to relax, and to one extent that's true, but to really get a leg up in these college admissions means that you're making the most of the summer. So sorry to say, but it's like an unspoken requirement that you, you have productive summers. That is depending on how competitive you want to be. For me, I did a rigorous six month, six week, oh, six months would have been tough, six week program at Boston University called Promise. And this was extremely difficult, one of the most difficult experiences I've gone through, but it really mirrored my Caltech experience actually, because we really depended on collaboration and working through long nights. And the excitement and fun came through working on those difficult math problems together. And so that was reflected in my essays as well, which I think was a very big plus. Furthermore, there are extracurriculars. Do not depend on breadth of extracurriculars. It's more about depth. You probably hear that a lot. Like the college application has 10 spots, I believe, for your extracurriculars, but that does not mean to fill them up with 10 things that you're all equally invested in because that probably means you're not very invested in any. So pick like two or three that you really excel in and show leadership. So if it's like robotics, then become the president or vice president, or if it's math club, then like lead a new initiative. So for me, like I was president of Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society. And since our school didn't offer AMC tests, then I coordinated with my math teacher, my favorite math teacher to be the proctor of this exam because it's like really helpful for people again to have that stat. In fact, Caltech is the only school who looks at like AMC and AIME scores. When we had a snow day, in fact, I hosted the AMC exams <laughs> at my house. So some stuff like that is just, it makes you stand out more. And it just shows your commitment to math and science because like if you don't enjoy math and science enough, to be frank, you're probably not gonna enjoy Caltech a lot because it's really tough. If you don't have a genuine joy in the problems you're solving, it's gonna be not quite enjoyable. <laughs> Caltech actually has the requirements in high school, a mastery of calculus and a readiness to study math topics beyond calculus. And yeah, so start early, see what math classes you can take even over the summer if you feel like you're behind. That's why I mentioned the quote at the beginning, going through the process and seeing what it takes to get into Caltech, even I say MIT for that matter because they're all top like STEM schools. It's valuable because you can decide whether you enjoy the pieces of the process that you need to go through in order to achieve your current goal or dream. And if you don't like those pieces, then you know you can pivot. The other requirement is one year of physics, one year of chemistry, and science classes, again, taken at the highest level offered by your school. You're really trying to max out those classes. Okay, the final thing is personal qualities. So we're not just a bunch of nerds. Caltech tries to make sure that we're actually decent people, I suppose. And so collaboration is a huge part of Caltech and it's basically how the majority of us, I think, survives. The problems aren't made to be solved by yourself. They require that I was gonna use a consultant term here, but that's the only one I can think of right now. They require a thought partnership and you crunching through together. It's not only about putting your minds together that makes solving the problems easier, but it's also that solidarity in the community and working together till 1 or 2 a.m that helps you get through it. And so unless you're just a super genius, go you, that's awesome, then you'll need to work with other people. And so you show this collaborative spirit through your essays. You can also indicate what contributions you did in your club such that you're not only showing your passion for that club or math and science, but you want to spread it to other people too. And you want to build up those around you because Caltech is all about being a team. What I've heard a lot is that Caltech is so much more collaborative and less competitive than other STEM schools. What's really unique about Caltech also is the honor code. So if you don't know what this is, you should definitely look into it. No member of the Caltech community shall take unfair advantage of any other member of the Caltech community. This is another reason for why we're able to have those take home exams. Having high standards and strong values is valued in Caltech admissions. And this is a special part that they would like to preserve. So show that you'll help them preserve it. These two aspects can be accomplished mainly through 
your essays, take advantage of all the words you have to show something new and well-rounded. Try to hit like each aspect. So even though Caltech doesn't value as much like interest of the school, like going on campus for a visit, what's more indirect is their valuing of how passionate you are about going to Caltech for the math and science. And this also can be reflected through your essays. Talking with current students and understanding their unique culture and environment are really, really valuable. And again, can give you a leg up. <laughs> and again, can give you a leg up. Please check out my vlogs. They're very comprehensive. They go through literally a week in the life of Caltech students. So you can see the dynamics of the day to day, how difficult it is, but also how fun it is how great the people are. Being immersed in that kind of lifestyle will give you a better understanding such that you can cater your essay a better way to the admissions office. I covered all my bases today. Thanks very much for watching and I hope this was helpful. Please comment down below any questions you may have, anything I missed because I will answer every comment on this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I wish you the best of luck and remember that college isn't the end-all be-all and I'll see you next time. Bye!